Hello everyone, I am sure you are having good time. Uh, welcome you once again to MSB lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. In my previous lecture, I discussed about uh, uh, first order spin system taking several examples and one such examples I considered was styrene. In styrene, although it was appearing like a first order spectrum, it is actually it is not first order spectrum. So that means geminal coupling we came across although magnitude was about 1.4 or so. So, how that happens and how to interpret let us look into now second order spin system. Second order coupling we call it as. So, the examples of 1H NMR spectra we discussed so far involved first order coupling. So, that means the chemical shift difference uh, we call it as delta delta between the nuclei is considerably greater than the coupling constant usually 5 times greater that means delta delta is greater than j then it is called first order coupling. When delta j is larger the nuclei involved in the spectrum are designated with letters from extreme ends of alphabet. That means for example, a and x, a m x, a x 2, a 2 x 2 depending upon how many such nuclei are there in a given uh, molecule. That means when delta delta is larger the nuclei involved in the spectrum are designated with letters extreme ends of alphabet that taken from extreme ends of the alphabet A x we come across A m x, A x 2, A 2, A x 2 etcetera. So, when delta j is less than 5 j that means chemical shift difference is much smaller than coupling constant then for such a system we are using letters close together in the alphabet for example, A B, A B C, A 2 B C something like that. So, in those cases what happens the larmer frequencies of nuclei of different elements are always very large in those cases in the first order spectrum if you consider or in first order coupling the larmer frequencies of nuclei of different elements are always very large second order coupling can occur only between the nuclei of the same isotope one should remember that one nuclei of the same isotope only can exhibit second order coupling. Okay. For example, as I said protons are same carbon atom when it is there and they are chemically equivalent and magnetically non equivalent in that case we come across, but vicinally substituted fluorine and hydrogen. So, that can never be second order coupling that is always first order spectrum. That means, second order coupling can occur only between the nuclei of the same isotope. For example, between 2 1 H nuclei, 3 19 F or 3 phosphorus. Since the chemical shift differences are very small for 1 H, the majority of second order couplings are observed in 1 H NMR spectrum. Here surrounding hydrogen we have only 1 S electron and it is spherically symmetrical and hence chemical shifts are very small range we have 1 to 10 only in exceptional cases where we have coordination compounds and metal to hydrogen bond is there. In that case we may come across up to 60 hertz yeah 60 ppm otherwise in most of the organic molecules it does not go beyond okay, 10 ppm. So, that means as a result what happens since the chemical shift differences are very small in 1 H the majority of second order couplings are observed only in 1 H NMR spectra and we also come across in case of phosphorus NMR also. So, let us consider a simple second order spectrum such as A B since the chemical shifts of the nuclei in a second order uh, system are similar the energy levels are much closer compared to the same in the first order. This is very very important when we differentiate between first order coupling and second order coupling. The chemical shifts of the nuclei in a second order system are very similar that means they have chemical shifts much closer the energy levels are much closer compared to the same in first order spectrum or first order spectrum. So, let us now I have given a series of spectra here they represent typically A B case. In A B case the middle energy levels are similar to A 2 here if you see here they are A 2 as this middle levels becomes closer it becomes difficult to tell which nucleus has which M i value. 
that is the problem we come across in second order splitting. As these mid order levels becomes closer, it becomes difficult to tell which nucleus has which MI value, whether it has plus half or minus half. Similar to A2 case, consider the linear combination of two wave functions here. Since these new functions are mixtures, it is no longer possible to designate the transitions whether they are due to change in MI uh, of MI of A or B. As a result, by simply looking into spectrum, it is no longer possible to determine the chemical shifts of A and B. So, general patterns of the AB spectrum depends on delta A of A and that of B and the corresponding J value. So, to what extent uh, delta J is comparable, delta, delta is comparable with delta J that would tell you the separation. The spectra shown here are for J equals 10 and a variety of delta delta values. So, so, here in all of them if you just look into it coupling constant is kept 10 and then a different variety of delta delta values are given. When delta delta is very large relative to J spectrum appears as a distorted a doublet. The intensity of inner lines increases as J by delta increases here. So, that means at delta delta equals 0 the spectrum is reduced to a single line as in case of A2 system. So, this is how you can correlate and also all these cases are of different AB depending upon the difference in delta delta with respect to J value. Few points to remember in case of uh, uh, second order uh, coupling is in a first order spin system delta delta must be greater than delta j. That means, what one should remember is this one is much greater than delta j, I mean not delta j, j. All chemically equivalent nuclei must also be magnetically equivalent, okay. This is very important. In first order spectrum, all chemically equivalent nuclei also magnetically equivalent. That means, if you are considering two geminal hydrogen atoms, so they are chemically equivalent as well as magnetically equivalent. What is the meaning of chemically equivalent and magnetically equivalent? Two or more nuclei are chemically equivalent if they can be interchanged by the operation of some symmetry elements of the molecule. So, two or more nuclei are chemically equivalent if they can be interchanged by a, the operation of some symmetry elements of the molecule. For example, let us say you take uh, phenol and we have ortho hydrogen atoms are there and simply by doing a C2 rotation with respect to OH and para hydrogen atom by rotating. Okay, what happens? If we cannot distinguish them, then we can say both are chemically equivalent. In case of AB system, we are giving this delta AB equals delta 1 minus delta 4 into delta 2 minus delta 3 and the middle point will be given as delta usually and then J can be calculated. Uh, delta 1 minus delta 2 or that is nothing but equal to delta 3 minus delta 4. This is how the J is determined here and also chemical shift also determined here. Delta AB equals we have to take the middle of this one. Now, let us consider some examples here. As I mentioned, if you consider here chlorobenzene and if you consider this as a, a rotational axis and if you do C2 rotation and 1 and 5 cannot be distinguished are indistinguishable. Similarly, H4 and H2 are indistinguishable. These two are called chemically equivalent and these two are called chemically equivalent. And again, if you take in this one, all these are chemically equivalent here. And then again, if you consider here, again they are chemically equivalent here because you cannot distinguish them. And similarly, if you consider this picture I have shown here, H on C2 and C4. So, this one and whatever the hydrogens we have on uh, C2 and C4 I have not shown here or Cis2, CH3, CH3 and are equivalent so as H on C2 and C4 trans to CH3 plane. So, plane extending through C1 and C3 makes C2 and C4 equivalent and similarly if you look into Fe to C19 here the axis through Fe Fe bond if you make it terminal and bridging are equivalent, these three are equivalent and these three are equivalent. So, th these are equivalent and these are equivalent. 
So, this is how we can identify whether some symmetry operations can make them indistinguishable after that symmetry operation. So, that means now we can have a better understanding of chemical and magnetical equivalence or non-equivalence. So, if you say chemically and magnetically equivalent nuclei, that means magnetically equivalent means each member of a chemically equivalent set of nuclei must be equally coupled to each member of any other chemically equivalent set in the spin system. So, that means here in chlorobenzene, if you consider H1 and H5 are equivalent, so as H2 and H4. So, these two are identical, these two are identical equivalent and the third set is H3. It is H1 coupled to H2, okay, H1 coupled to H2 is same as H5 coupled to H2. Answer is no because of the distance. That means, if each member of one equivalent set is not equally coupled to each member of second set, it cannot be first order. So, this is how you can determine whether a given molecule would give a first order coupling or second order coupling when you have situation like this. If H1 we are considering the H1 interaction of H1 in H2 is different from H5 and H2. Similarly, H2 interaction with H1 is different from H2 interaction with H5 or we can consider H4 interaction with H5 is different from H4 interaction with H1. So, in this case what happens? It cannot be first order. So, chlorobenzene is an example of three spin systems. If you designate this as A, this is A prime and B, B prime and C. So, we call it as this one. And then A prime, uh, what we say is the one nuclei with prime says that they are not magnetically equivalent. A and A prime are chemically equivalent, but they are not magnetically equivalent. And similarly, B and B prime are chemically equivalent, but they are not magnetically. So, the uh, prime A here represents chemically equivalent, but not magnetically. So, letters in the same region or nearby alphabet indicate the similarity in their chemical shapes. That is the reason when we take A, A, B, B and C, that means they have almost very similar chemical shift values. If the chemical shifts of H1 and H5 are significantly different from that of H2 and H5, then the spin system would be A, B, B prime and X, X prime. That can happen if the magnetic field strength is much larger as delta, delta would be larger. So, this is where the significance of going from a low field NMR instruments to high field NMR happens. So, when you go for higher and higher instrument, what happens? If you take chemical shift in hards, the separation will be much larger. As a result, what would happen? The all complicated second order spectrum can be converted into very simple first order spectrum. This is where uh, people always look for 400, 500, 600 megahertz instruments instead of using 200 or 300 or even 100 megahertz instruments. The moment we designate with prime, A, A prime, B, B prime and C, that means A and A prime are chemically equivalent, but they are not magnetically that one should remember. And that one can understand by simple analogy, whatever I have shown here. And ideal example is chlorobenzene. So, remember that one. So, now let us look into three spin order system. For calculating spin multiplicity or the number of lines in a peak, 2n a plus 1 is not useful for second order spectrum and it only for the first order spectrum. Again, using 2n a plus 1 rule where n is number of identical or equivalent nuclei and i is the nuclear spin, this one holds good along with the corresponding Pascal triangle only in case of first order spectrum but in the second order spectrum, we cannot use this rule at all. So, now let us consider a 19F NMR spectrum of uh, this molecule here, trifluoroethylene and this is an example of uh, a AMX spin system consists of three sets of doublets of doublets here. It is a 19F NMR we are considering and uh, 19F also is 100 percent abundant and I equals okay, 19F if you consider. I equals half and 100 percent abundance is there. So, it is as easy as 1 H or it is very similar to 1 H NMR or 31 P NMR. So, now if you just look into F A, we have doublet of doublet, F M we have doublet of doublet and F X we have 
doublet of doublet is there and corresponding coupling is given and M x and uh, M x coupling is there and A m coupling is there and M x coupling is larger again trans coupling is there and then next A m coupling, A m coupling is there and that is 56 hertz and A x coupling is there that is 76 hertz. So, you can see here uh, this appears like a first order spectrum. So, when two of the three nuclei have similar chemical shifts, I am repeating again, when two of the three nuclei have similar chemical shifts, the spin system is designated as A B X. When two of the three nuclei have similar chemical, we have three nuclei are there and two of them have very similar chemical shifts. In that case, the system should be, spin system should be called as or designated as A B X in which the relative sign of the coupling constants affect the appearance of the spectrum. So, A B portion of consists of 8 lines that resembles 2 sets of quadrates often they are overlapped. So, A B portion itself will be consisting of 8 lines that resemble 2 sets of quadrates and often they are overlapped and giving a different type of intensities for lines. And the X portion consists of 6 lines with 2 lines being very weak and almost they are in the baseline. Transition from A B, A M X to A B X is shown in, in the next spectrum I am going to show here. So, you can see here how A M X spectrum where it appears like a first order spectrum is converted into a second order spectrum because of the very little difference in the chemical shifts of A and M. So, here and here. So, now let us look into few points I have uh, listed here. These series of spectra what I have shown from 1 to 4 represent transition of a first order spectrum A m x to A b x and eventually to A to x. So, now uh, these are all simulated spectra. A m x with respective chemical shifts of 4, 2 and 1.1 ppm where J a m coupling is 12 and then J x coupling is 3 and J m x coupling is 10 hertz. Next in the second one, it, this is about the first one I told you in the second one, again this is A B x system with respective chemical shifts of same 4, 3.6 and 0.1 ppm and J A B value is brought down to 9 and then B x is 3 and A x is 7 here. So, now spectrum 3 represents A B x system with A B chemical shifts of 4 x of 0.1 here only 1 and 0.1 ppm and the coupling constants are same as that we saw in case of 2, 9, 3 and 7 hertz. Now, in the A to x system here what happens with A chemical shift of 4 here and then this is 0.1 and then J x is only shown that is about 9 hertz. So, sometime you can see some of these variations are there and as I said these values depends on the chemical shift difference between A and M. And as the chemical shifts of X nuclei moves closer to those of A and B, it becomes A B C system. E eventually now we saw M moving very close towards A to become A B. In the same fashion if the signal due to X also starts moving towards B, it becomes say a B C system spectrum can have up to 15 lines here. You can see here this is a typical A B C spectrum here A B C spin system I have given two here one at 100 megahertz the chemical shift values for A B C are 4, 3.7 and 3.4 for A B and C and the corresponding coupling constants of A B is 9 hertz, B C 3 hertz and then A C 7 hertz and the same coupling constants are kept and the spectrum recorded at 300 megahertz would be something like this. Here it, you can see clearly uh, as the field strength increases they are moving away from each other. When they are moving away from each other and it, it for example, if you go for uh, maybe 400 or 500 megahertz they will move even farther apart and then it becomes simple AMX system. So, this is the advantage of recording uh, spectra at higher magnetic field strength. Let us consider another simulated spectrum with A B X spin system here. You can see here A B X spin system is there and delta A minus delta B equals 10 hertz here and then delta A B equals 10 hertz and uh, since we do not know the sign always if the sign is not known always we represent the magnitude, but we are not mentioning the sign 
and when we look into the sign here, so when we are ignoring the sign, it is always ideal to uh, represent in modulus. So, this one is minus 4 and this is 1 hertz. So, that means basically if you consider this A B X spin system, X resonance resembles a doublet expected for a first order spectrum here with X only coupled to B, only X A B X only x is coupled to b. Close examination of expanded version actually shows 6 lines for x. This one shows 6 lines and it is not first order. In such cases where resonance appears to be not affected by another nucleus, H A or X A are said to be virtually coupled. So, that means uh, this a typical system where we have this kind of uh, uh, coupling values and chemical shifts, we come across virtual coupling. Let me stop here and continue more discussion on uh, second order system in my next lecture. Until then, have an excellent time.